Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. I was going to do Facebook Live early because Rich is still home and most likely he's going to be home the rest of the day. And so I wanted to come on here and give you a scripture that will encourage, exhort you, strengthen you, and give you food for thought. We're looking at how to really shine the light of Christ Jesus. And so I want to get into Philippians 2, verses 14 through 16. These are actually on my Facebook and my memories today for the verse of the day for Bible Gateway. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Katie. God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. Y'all are the early birds with me. Thanks so much for joining in. And so I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified Classic, and I just realized I don't have any chapstick on. Let me put my lips on. Get my chapstick on. Burt's Bees, by the way. Burt's Bees, which is natural, and it is amazing. It's shimmer. Hey, June. Thank you, Katie. Awesome to have y'all on here. And so I'm going to do Philippians 2, 14 through 16 in the Amplified Classic. Scripture says, do all things. Can y'all say all? <clears throat> not some things, not a few things. But all things, good morning, Miss Donna, do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves. Now, just that first line is amazing. I mean, that hits home, right? So do all things without grumbling, fault finding and complaining, because you know what? When you do something and you complain and you grumble and you think you're doing about the circumstance or about another person, it's not against anyone but God. Is that not mind-blowing? So do all things without grumbling, fault-finding, and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves. So what does that mean? Do all things with a God confidence in the righteousness of Christ Jesus when Holy Spirit calls me to do something for the Father, I just do it. I don't think about it. Think about the military and a commander telling those under him or under her to do something. What good is it going to do if they grumble and complain? They're going to do it half-heartedly. They're not going to do it fully to the best of their ability. And you know what? So many times we're living into tomorrow's speculations that we're not taking in the abundant life today. Now, let me say that one more time. So many times we're living in tomorrow's speculations, which are the worries that would try to grab our heart, that we don't fully embrace and enjoy the abundant life today. You are not promised tomorrow. You are just having enough bread for today. Sufficient is the day's trouble, is what scripture says in Matthew 6, 34. Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves that you may show yourself to be blameless and guilt guileless, innocent and uncontaminated children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable, in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse, among whom you are seen as bright lights, stars are beacons shining out clearly in the dark world, holding out to it and offering to all people, men and women, children, the word of life, capital L, the word of life, so that in the day of Christ, I may have something of which exultantly to rejoice and glory in that I did not run my race in vain or spend my labor for no purpose. That's Philippians 2, 14 through 16. And so this is kind of tagging along with the other day, with Proverbs 3.30, about not having contention, strife with someone in which there is no reason to. And so let's look at this. And in Philippians 2.14-16, through Scripture says, listen, do everything without complaining, without fault-finding, grumbling against God, 
right? Because that's who we really do it against. And don't do it questioning and doubting what he's called you to do. Don't doubt and question other people. And don't doubt and question yourself. That's double-mindedness, James 1. So that you can show yourself to be blameless, guileless, innocent, uncontaminated. Uncontaminated of what? Of the world. Because what does the world do? Grumbles, complains, fault finds, negative, negative, negative. Okay? We're to look at things that are above and not on things of this earth. So if you're grumbling, if you're fault finding, if you're looking for negativity, guess what? Your eyes are fixed on the things of the world and the way that the world does. We shine the light of life of Christ Jesus when we do just the opposite, okay? Now listen, each and every person has a trial. Each and every person is struggling. You've got your own issues where the word is trying to prune you, John 15, 2, of the unclean things of this world. And so if you're grumbling, if you're fault finding, if you're complaining, Philippians 2, 14 through 16, then that shows that there's something inside of your heart that the Father wants to remove so that you see the things of the kingdom of heaven. In the new book, I cannot wait. I am beyond excited. I've written over 200 pages in chapter up through chapter 4 of the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Disease, disease the sequel to Mindfulness, Mount of Christ. And chapter 3, just being 100 pages alone and really showing you the morphogenetic field and the two kingdoms, the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of heaven. And as God has been having me preach and teach on the kingdom of the world, warning for over a year, well, really many years, because even in my memories the other day was from 2022, about the dream I had with the Epicurean church, where I went into this sanctuary of sanctuaries, and it was so luxurious, and it was just so worldly, and you would never know it. And there were so many sanctuaries in this big sanctuary. It's like a city of sanctuaries. And all the sanctuaries, God said it was the Epicurean church. And God was just showing me. He said, Robin, you have to flee. You have to run out. There is so much worldliness within my people. And you and your family have got to flee from it. And in the dream, as I shared it, I was describing family members and us running out of this church. And it was the church where the world had crept into the church. And so when we look at this in Philippians 2, let me tell you what, saints, there's so much backbiting among the church. There's so much talking poorly. And as James 3 says, fresh water and bitter water does not come out of the same fountain. If you've got bitterness about any person coming out of your members, listen, this is the good news in relation to that. As Holy Spirit shows it to you, then you recognize, oh my goodness, the world is in my members and I have to repent. I have to turn away from the world. Good morning, Annette. And I have to turn toward the kingdom of heaven. And so in the book, you see the two kingdoms on earth, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of the world. And within this invisible field, literally, I'm telling you, it's going to blow your mind because scripture reveals it as well. You're going to seize one of the kingdoms. And so you're getting your identity from one of the kingdoms, the kingdom of the world. And we see Jesus is the door to the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 11, 12 through 13, which I've written in many books, taught, done a whole training on at uh, Talladega Speedway even. I did a whole training on it just on Matthew 11, 12 and 13. Since the days of John the Baptist until the present time, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent seize it by force. This is the thing, saints of God. Holy Spirit is waking you up to areas where you're grumbling, you're fault finding, you're complaining, because those are the blemished areas in your soul of the world. I cannot tell you how much in dreams, in scripture, in teachings, in writings over the last year and a half, where God has, or several years really, where God has shown me the world is in the church. I'm telling you, saints. And God has shown me that 
uh, the, the, that the way is narrow and few are those that find it. Don't just think you're going to heaven because you received Jesus Christ as your savior. You have to show yourself as a disciple abiding in his teaching, abiding John 15 in the vine where John 15, eight, you bear fruits of righteousness that glorify the father. You shall know them by their fruits. Saints, we have to wake up. We have to walk in such a so sobriety, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Look at your relationships because relationships expose everything. As I mentioned yesterday on my broadcast, and if you haven't watched that Proverbs 3.30 teaching, subscribe to my YouTube channel, okay? Those people get the teachings immediately, and they don't have to go through my Facebook. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, table it. If you don't know where it is, message me. I'll send it to you. But listen, saints, it, the way is so narrow, okay? And as I mentioned yesterday, what is going to expose our relationship in Christ Jesus is our interaction of relationships on this earth. As I mentioned last week in Proverbs 3, 3 through 6, with good understanding, I'm telling you, saints, we have to be circumspect. And so when you look at Philippians 2, 14 through 16, the verse of the day, Bible Gateway, in my memories for many years, you know what, saints? Let it be a guard on our heart. Are we fault-finding? Are we grumbling? Are we complaining? Now, it doesn't mean you don't have moments of a come apart. What it means is, what is the pattern in your life? What is prominent? And so we want to have a circumspect wisdom of understanding from the Holy Spirit upon our members so that we're exhorting the word of truth, we're lifting Jesus up, and we're looking to believe the best about others. Saints, rejoice when you're in a fiery trial. If you feel backslidden, do not beat yourself up. Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. And just like God had me do in preparation for Pentecost, the whole Matthew 6. Read Matthew 6 in its entirety. Read it. It is Christ's recipe in staying free of the world. It starts out with giving, fasting, and praying. Those three things are the recipe that Christ has given us to be free of the world so that we're not looking at the world for our identity, but we're bringing heaven in our members, in relationships, and spaces in which we step into in circumstances on earth. Amen. God bless you. Have an amazing day. I love you. And be encouraged in the Lord. Let these broadcasts not bring condemnation. Just know that those whom the Father loves, He rebukes, He chastises, Proverbs 3, so that we can be, fi be found blameless, faultless, unblemished with the things of this world because we're about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day.